loving platoonians it's been over three years since the beautifully tacked rescue administration took over the affairs of plateau the third year of every dispensation in nigeria serves strictly as an electioneering year thus it will be unfair unkind and careless to not x-ray the laudable achievements of the lalong led administration if any since the governor is seeking re-election for a second term allow me at this point to reiterate that Governor Lalong's miraculous appearance in the Little Rifle Mansion did not happen on account of his intellectual, charismatic, or financial capacity. It was a protest that necessitated his installation as a replacement to the impunity of Jang and the planned slavery he wanted to introduce platoonians to. Nonetheless, he has every constitutional right to seek for an extension in office in what is termed his election. Having been governor for three years, the only license to an extended stay in office is performance and the delivery of campaign promises, as documented in his five-point agenda. In view of that, the rescue team through the Vote Lalong campaign organization has painstakingly outlined Governor Lalong's rescue achievements, namely regular payment of salaries, return of peace and security, massive rural development, accountability and transparency in governance, creation of a conducive environment for investment, and lastly, youth and women empowerment. Based on the aforementioned accomplishments, I can boldly recite that the governor has delivered on the five-point policy thrust that sums up his campaign promises. The bone of contention, however, is whether or not these self-acclaimed achievements are imaginary or real. Let us therefore do a social audit of the rescue administration by deconstructing their achievements as spelled out and celebrated by mediocres. 1. On regular payment of salaries, this government received bailout funds amounting to 10.5 billion naira for salary purposes. Nonetheless, the Lalong administration has lived up to the ideals enshrined in the labor laws. Even though small segments like the part-time lecturers of the State Polytechnic are still lamenting for over 14 months of unpaid entitlements, the governor is rated high in terms of payment of entitlements. And that to a good chunk of Plateau people is cardinal. But with the population of Plateau put at over 4.2 million by the National Bureau of Statistics as at 2016, and the number of civil servants in the state believed to be 17,883, by the cabinet office as at 2016. It implies that only 0.42% of Plateau citizens are civil servants. This figure of less than 1% is statistically insignificant considering the 564,913 votes that brought him to office. Thus, citing an entitlement to 0.42% of citizens as key performance indicator is criminalizing the so-called dividends of democracy and good governance. Secondly, on the return of peace and security, the Lalong-led government last year expended over 150 million naira to host music and Nollywood celebrities to celebrate the return of peace in the state. In the same vein, this team has lavished over 600 million naira to host two editions of the Just Carnival with no economic re returns recorded. Our rescuer has a recipe for peace. That I should go and do a decreasing law. And I said, a decreasing law for what? Nobody studied last year, like me last year. The governor of Benway, I told him, I, when he was doing the law, I said, why don't you do, just be careful, take the other steps before you start the implementation. Well, but states are different. Say his own concept is different. I know that the government has in just. Mm -hmm. It's on a grazing route. I said in the interest of peace, I will appoint a house of landing man. I appointed him and there was peace in plan to stay. Today as I speak, over 78 communities in the state have been raised down and sacked by marauders. And at least 19,000 bona fide platoonians have been reduced to IDPs in their God-given land. What started in the small village of Mahanga in Rium local government has spread to Rankum, Fars, Loton, Rot, Darwin, and so on have been sacked by the militia. This list keeps expanding daily as villages in Basel local government, Bokos, 
just south local government, down in just north, and the recent June 22nd to 25th cleansing in about 11 villages in Berkeley, Bokos, and just south, where at least 215 innocent lives, including pregnant, nursing mothers, and infants, were lost. The governor who was in Abuja contemplated returning to the state, and when he did, he couldn't even pretend to be remorseful as he was full of smiles and made sure the vice president was given a red carpet ovation with smiles as though celebrating his wedding. In the same vein, Lalong fed the president into believing that the attacks were politically motivated, disregarding the Meyati Allah confession. To show the demonism of the Lalong team, the permanent secretary security, Cornelius Sholbial, pressurized the state's police command to bring down the number of casualties to 40 so as to reduce tension, reminding them they have to be dispassionate in times like this. From 2015 to date, we have lost notable dignitaries in the state to assailants. Chief Andong Adaki, district head of Manguna, May 26, 2016. Chief Lazarus Agwai, the Savron, your first class chief, on July 18, 2016. Chief Haruna Marena of Tadai in Bokos Local Government, August 17, 2017. Moses Gom, the former head of civil service in the state, October 10, 2017. Chief John Gyang, the district head of Gashish in Breaking Light Local Government, on May 7, 2018, who is currently in coma. If VIPs can be murdered in cold blood without a single arrest recorded, what is our fate as ordinary plateau citizens under La Long's watch? I want to ask, is there peace in plateau state? Does the rescue team understand the meaning of peace? If yes, what kind of peace do we have? Plateau has lost more lives to the genocidal atrocities and cleansing by assailants than the sum total of Benue and Taraba states. Yet Governor Lalong, who swore to protect our lives and properties, decided to suppress and de-emphasize the killings by playing the role of a spectator, even when it has degenerated to a daily havoc under his watch. On May 8th, while President Buhari was in just commissioning La Long's roadmap to peace, innocent platoonians were being killed concurrently, but our rescuers saw no need to mention insecurity as a threat. This is not our governor. This man is an enemy of Plateau. Houseboy of the president, a mole in the wheel of the Middle Belt's progress, a sellout and a betrayer to the oath of the people. On massive rural development, Governor Bako Lalong in his May 29, 2018 address cited as ongoing the opening of 42 rural roads. I want to clarify that only 10% of the project sum was paid since 2017 to contractors, out of which his so-called 54th birthday celebration was financed in addition to kickback paid. The commissioners of works and information can release the sums paid for analysis. Consequently, the contractors have shut down operations due to non-release of funds by the state accountant general, Cyril Senyan, who served as Governor Lalong's chief of staff during his speakership and his vent for primitive accumulation of wealth because of the exorbitant sum demanded as kickback. Still on massive rural development, the solar mini-grid electrification project at Demshin and Angwan Rina communities in Chandam local government were entirely funded by the German government and the European Union, of which our amiable governor kept our foreign funders waiting for hours before arriving for commissioning. So apart from intentions, the massive rural development propagated by the Lalong administration is a scam. Before delving into accountability and transparency in governance, I would like to refresh our memories by quoting Mr. Governor in his inaugural speech of May 29, 2015, where he cited hard work, honesty, and integrity as Catholican for the problems that continue to plague Plateau, fellow Platoonians. It's no news that no regime in the history of our state has won the trinket of good governance, which is hypothetically anchored 
on transparency, accountability, and integrity like the La Long regime. The governor, it is. 2018 May 29 address while claiming to be embarking on revolutionary changes and delivering campaign promises cited as frustrating lean resources in the face of increasingly competing demands. With lean resources, we can afford six new ministries. With lean resources, the rescue government can afford spending 953 million 494,496 naira 18 kobo and 1,054,135,205 naira for Muslim and Christian pilgrimages, respectively, in addition to hundreds of millions spent on Salah and Christmas packages. With lean resources, we can afford to spend over 600 million naira for 2017 and 2018 just carnivals. With lean resources, the governor and his team, who were accustomed to night bus travels, can now afford to charter planes for gallivanting around. Maybe the difference between the APC government and the past is that you will not find lavish spending of government resources, you know, in terms of uh, uh, tiffery or do I say stealing of government resources to, to, to go into some kind of lifestyle that uh, hitherto was very detrimental to the progress of the country. Let me show you how reckless, lavish and impulsive the Rescue Administration is in managing Plateau in the recession. The office of the governor alone in three years swallowed 2 billion 594 million 86,602 naira on local travels, 942 million 688,182 naira on protocol gifts, 375 million 32,900 naira on refreshment and meals. 396 million 43,824 naira to fuel official vehicles. 139 million 160,700 naira for maintenance of official vehicles. 54 million 244,710 naira 50 kobo for maintenance of generators. The office of the Secretary Governor of the State has also squandered 485 million. 259,350 naira on refreshment and meals, 351,296,813 naira 16 kobo on protocol gifts, 1,004,781,764 naira 84 kobo for general allowances, 710,184,971 naira on other maintenance services. 42 million naira for burial expenses. The Right Honorable Bako Rescue Administration spent about 3.5 billion naira for the procurement of fairly used Dubai imported cars as official vehicles. 314 million 602,764 naira 64 kobo to renovate and furnish the Asokoro Governor's Lodge as against the 200 million naira approved by the Plateau State House of Assembly and 7,594,912,000 in the name of security votes. All this misappropriated, misused and stolen commonwealth could have finished this and transformed Plateau. This so-called rescue governor has spent more money on exotic automobiles than on the sum total expended on healthcare in the state, water, youth empowerment, tourism, housing and the judiciary and you are rescuing plateau i think this is a scorecard for personal rescue of pedestrians who hardly survive and men of the moment existing in style over the pains of the poor and negating god's punishments this uncompleted road was uh, was commissioned by president buhari this is the panyam fish farm there's not a single fingerling because there's nothing to power the hatcher this government sold 50 percent stake to solberg nigeria limited that brought laborers from Lagos to re renovate the ceiling. The sale of the bonds down just main market scrap that generated about 270 million naira was not captured in the market accounts or in the revenue profile of the state. Illegal mining activities have risen to an all time high since the advent of this administration. So also is the illegal lumbering in Wasi and Mikang. 
Lawlessness is the new law because we have an obsequious, fearful ruler and absentee governor. The protocol lodge at the Haipang airport that was allocated 280 million naira in 2016 and 100 million naira in 2017 remains unvisited and untouched. Only 30,000 naira was remitted as proceeds from the JMDB pack and pay policy in 2016 while nothing was registered in 2017. Let's do a simple math. Motorists pay 100 naira to park their vehicles on Rampalm Street and Ahmadu Bellewe with the exception of Mur Salah Mohammed Way due to fear of our brothers. There are about 70 youths making a conservative average of 2,000 naira daily. That is 140,000 naira daily, 840,000 naira weekly, 3 million, 360,000 naira monthly, all unaccounted for by the rescue team. The senior special advisor, media and publicity, Mark Longyen, is selling the Jang built carbon overhead bridge and a handshake with President Trump as achievements of the rescue team on social media due to redundancy. Governor Lalong has more campaign billboards than capital projects in the state. Show me one capital project started and completed by this team. And he uses thugs to bring down billboards paid for by opponents because he is threatened. In the April of this year, 2018, the governor spent a total of five days in the state and has cumulatively not spent more than 100 days in the state from May 29th, 2015 to May 29th, 2018. Thus, Christian Abuja-based governor and the absentee governor. So the only way this rescue administration has exhibited transparency, accountability and integrity is in darkness, irresponsibility and debauchery. On the creation of a conducive environment for investments, the rescue government thwarted the plans of three different airline operators to begin activities at the Yakubu Gowon airport because he can afford to charter flights for picnics with taxpayers' money. Despite the fact that the rescue government ex has expended hundreds of millions to celebrate peace, Governor Lalong is going down in history as the first democratically elected governor to dissolve legally constituted local government councils, thus reversing us to selectocracy and a retrogressive system of governance for a four-year term due to lack of focus and ability. Our governor is committed to selling all physical assets belonging to the state to himself and his cronies. This team injected billions to revamp the Highland Bottling Company, known for quality pops, into a pure water factory that is partly owned by some fictitious entities. This government is also paying billions for the purported reacquisition of back farms in an ungodly deal involving the same players involved in its sale. Even the Nigerian Bottling Company has shut down the adjust plant that has been in operation since 1972 under the conducive business environment of Governor Lalong. Unemployment rate in the state is now 65%. There is no progress at the inland container dry port, even with hundreds of millions sunk by this team. Our golfing governor is known for organizing flamboyant tournaments wherever he goes, but has added no value to golfing in the state. For instance, his donation of 30 million naira for his birthday kitty at the Lamingo Golf Club. The only thriving in investment environment created by this administration is beer parlors, brothels, and examination malpractice. Lastly, on women and youth empowerment, the governor still claims to have trained and equipped 4,000 women and youths in the state with starter packs through the Plateau State Micro Enterprise Development Agency. I want to state categorically that it is a blatant lie. Plasmida worked with Apurimak and Inde Ezekiel Gomos, consultant general and intellectual contractor in the land of the blind, owner of the Just Business School, to train them for months, but not a dime has been paid to a single trainee to date. As a consolation, however, this is what Governor Lalong means by youth empowerment. There is no reason why a governor cannot go and enjoy himself in a club. Somebody that is going about because I gave him opportunity to enjoy freedom. But very soon, 
He will return your money to you. And when I will get that money back, we will do another cultural festival with that money. As the governor of this state, I will encourage it. It is period for dancing. Period for enjoyment. And we have youths worshipping him. My dream is to wake up to a plateau that is governed on the grounds of capacity, integrity, and patriotism devoid of tribalism, nepotism, favoritism, clannish patronage, and all the isms. Unfortunately, the Lalong team has taken psychophancy and mediocrity from a despicable level to a point where it is not only celebrated, but forcefully endorsed. They pay hopeless choristers to propagate falsehood and attack patriots on social media spaces and even physically like the recent case of the Lalong boys with a media employee. Plato youths, we have consciously and unconsciously adjusted to psychophancy, praise singing, bootlicking and flag waving. We have married underdevelopment, poverty and bad governance for crumbs. This is not within the inventory of what we can handle. We must wake up. We must go beyond the monotonous compliance with convention. We must balance the political menu and build the plateau of our dream. Because as the leaders of tomorrow, our tomorrow is today. Four years of nothingness, four years of borrowing to feast on our future must end. My plateau people, a vote for the continuity of this fraudulent and unqualified rescue administration is a blatant disrespect of our opportunity for true freedom and development. So instead of wiping our tears, let's wipe by pushing away the people that enslaved us and make us cry. Finally, let's not forget Proverbs 29 verse 2. When the wicked rule, the people groan. God bless Plato.